Hello everyone. Welcome back to our Let's Play of Disco Elysium. I'm Chris. I'm here with my co-host Tyler. Say hello, Tyler. Hi everybody. Uh, if you're talking to me directly, please don't shine a flashlight directly in my face repeatedly. That's a small thing, but uh, you know some people love to do that, especially if you're a cop. I was going to say, that's. Just, I mean, we are police officers, so we should probably be acting the part. We are. So, so we were interrogating this poor woman about Dice and her business, and the whole time she was just blinded now. She's got cataracts from this uh, police Yeah, and baton. she's got to like do like a bunch of close-up work, too, eh? It's tough, it's tough life. Yeah. Anyway, last time she gave us a gift uh, of a pair of novelty dice, but we dropped one. No, it is without. They, like, they clearly said do not separate when she gave it to us or tossed it to us, but... Uh, mm -hmm. We're not adept enough. Like, deft fingers fumbled with the dice. Oh, and it's that you reminds again. me, you, we course. still have the opportunity to order dice. If you, when, if or when you decide that you want a specific die, we can order them I, here. I'm actually curious. Does she have any cursed dice? What do you mean by cursed? <laughs> Abra, ad abra. Uh, as cursed as my life, I need to know. I need, like, a stand equivalent of dice in my Sounds life. Sounds good. All right. How about I surprise you? Come back in eight hours with seven real, and I'll give you your cursed die. Deal. That will be tomorrow, probably. Yeah. Uh, because, yeah, wait, wait. 8 p.m. plus eight hours is 4 a.m., so, yeah, it'll be tomorrow. Great. See you in eight hours, then. Was there anything else? We can order no. more too, so keep that I in order mind. Another yeah. One. <laughs> yeah, we can have a body. Yeah. I'm oh. a bit overloaded just now, so I can only produce one die per customer. Oh, I, I, oh yeah. Okay. Well, maybe we can. I can't remember if you can get another one later or not. Uh, anyway, we also have this shivers check, which is very low. So uh, I don't know if you want to try it or not. No, I don't want the secret to be like she's like squatting in here with no overhead. Fair. All right, so we can pick up the dice maker tomorrow yeah and we still smell like a dead man and although we did change clothes we did change clothes do you want to go do something about that uh no i like this drip swag we got no no uh, i mean about I the death smell oh eventually but uh, i'm curious if we can find the dye that we dropped underneath or if there's a way to get directly underneath her yeah we can go check all right well we He's know Sorry, we know that she's in the chimney above here, so it might be down here. I'm terrified of us getting accidental black. A thick layer of cold chimney. dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. What does smearing your hands with coal do? Because I know coal is like an exfoliant. But... <laughs> I was gonna say he's, it's activated charcoal, maybe. I don't know. Like, let's kick it with our foot, see what happens. I know it was uh, hesitant last time. A hollow ring echoes through the furnace. Oh. Your toe hurts. Why would you kick it that hard? When well, you kick the tires of your car, you don't give it all your force. You just you tap tap it. That's like tapping a gentle like a uh, coffee thing. I'm gonna Espresso. go buy some more magnesium from the frit. Uh, but anything else you want to do? <laughs> uh, no, if there's nothing that relates to the die, I think... I mean, we can look here. inside the furnace. Let's look inside the furnace. It's actually. dark and gross. The echo is so prominent. What are you doing? No. Uh, Wait, really? No, we're done here. Yeah, that's Maybe the same as before. Yeah, not as cool as I remember. So it seems like it is not around here. There's nothing interactable, and it's not in the furnace, so I think it might be lost. I'm pretty oh, sure. Huh. I'm gonna go behind the peek behind the curtain. I'm pretty sure if you drop them, you can only have the one. You can't find oh. the other one after that. I think. Well, great. So then we have like a pair that's been separated that will be supplanted by a cursed die. Mm -hmm. There's also we can also investigate uh, in the fridge more. I think, uh, but you, like, we can maybe do that later. Like aside from the body. Yeah, I think the so. The bear's eyes are still. Yeah, red. we didn't. We never it's investigated this. over the freezing corpse hidden. Uh, the Let's rest examine one of these ice heavy. cream wrappers. Sure. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge or the decomposing body in it. The paper still smells of vanilla and chocolate. Even under this stench, you can feel it. So yeah, I think this one is obvious. Makes sense. 
this one i think we can talk to the guy like we have been doing um and then yeah this we don't want to do today if you want to try and get his boots uh, i think tell me something dead man we should save for when we try to remove the dead man's boots okay like and i feel like do that's you want to an question the moment. existence of the cellar of the fridge or we got a pretty we, good explanation from the dice maker as to why I it's here but yeah i don't think we need that right okay. now all right where to i think we should well, if we can't find the die, let's go wash off the death smell before we question Mark Martinez and Martinez. Okay. All right, bath time. Oh yeah, I was gonna go to the frit and get more uh, magnesium, but I'm sure a healing, calming bath will not be bad for us in any way. I bet it'll heal you, anyways. Kim, would you care to join us? Oh, actually, maybe that's a problem. Do we have Do we have to make a bath check? Ah, once you can have some privacy, I see. Oh, Kim, stand up. So outside. it might be that because Kim is here, uh, we won't be able to do this just yet. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. Yeah. Wow, they're all locked. We've already tried them all. Yes. Nope. Kim, can you stand outside? Yeah, it doesn't seem to be that obvious. So we, we'll just have to wait until this evening once we're alone. Then we can do that. So we'll just keep that yeah. in the back of our mind. Well, Kim, anything else you want to do muscle. wandering around the world? Do you want to investigate um, some of the stuff we have in our inventory, or um, what do we have in the inventory that we haven't properly looked at? Like, I don't know if we actually looked at the die properly. If there's any cool meta text um, for that one, the die is just an item. But we have these interactables. We have this book that we haven't finished reading. There's case files. There's this book, other book we can read. The photo of the tattoos we haven't inspected. There is also this note on the fridge, which we haven't looked at yet. Hey, let's look at the note, then. Not to mention the bullet that we pulled out of the guy's head. We could, we could also investigate that. Oh, my goodness. So, those All are good those, choices. Yeah, so those seem like good choices. But anything, you know, there's no rush to do anything in this game. So. I think looking at the bullet is a, a good thing to do, especially since Kim's with us still. All right, let's do it. The bullet is safely sealed away in a plastic bag bearing the RCM stamp. Kim has filled out the label on the bag with the item number, case number, and date and location the bullet was found. Beside his orderly handwriting, the bullet looks especially sad, like a tiny, shriveled head of cauliflower. Ooh, I go for some cauliflower right now, actually. Yeah, man. Yeah. I vibe with cauliflower. I'm going to feel the bullet through the bag. Let's just fondle this little plastic bag. The squashed bullet has some sharp edges where the jacket has split open. It feels cold, even through the bag. You wouldn't ordinarily have cause to handle jacketed bullets. The citizen's militia uses cast bullets only. Little pebbles of metal loaded from the muzzle, usually in a cartridge. Interesting. Nice. I mean, I would put bullets in a cartridge to go into the gun. Like, I don't... I'd, I've never seen somebody manually load a, a Glock with a... Muzzle loader? <laughs> does, yeah. does Glock make <laughs> muzzle loaders? <laughs> uh, what do I do with you, bullet? What? I said, what do I do with you, bullet? I'm being poetic, Kim. Well, if I was the bullet, which I'm not, I would say, find a weapon that shot me. This is brilliant. Good idea? Kim, you're so smart, yeah. If we find who owns it, we will have likely found who used it. Possibly to kill our victim. This is just, just stellar police work here. Just, just incredible. Just John Madden level ass uh, police commentary. <laughs> just circling and drawing arrows. In if you find the gun the that shot the bullet. bullet of yours, the better. All right. All right the more we know about the bullet, the better. Kim says. Let's put it closer. Let's put it closer to our eye. Our mind. The jacket eye. of the bullet is made of a yellowish metal. It has blossomed out to reveal a dark gray core. The base of the bullet is close to five millimeters in diameter. Let's, let's look at the jacket of this bullet. Is it full metal? This Akajo windbreaker. You can just about make out a few strations near the base of the bullet. Little hairlines, linear. It feels standard. And the core? It's quite destroyed. Some of the fragments are still lodged in the wound. What can you say about the bullet so far? <laughs> <laughs> wow, I actually know this. Yes, it's as if you've seen bullets before, officer. 
Hmm. Well, I mean, we do know that from the square bullet hole murders in our casebook, which we still haven't uh, investigated. Oh, that's right. The one that's named like the case of the bullet that killed the guy. Mm-hmm. That's the jacket. Yeah, it's, just describe it. A jacketed bullet. Okay. It would have been shot from a military grade breech loading rifle, not from a muzzle loader like those typically found on the streets of Martinez. Highly unusual. The people of Revachol haven't carried breech-loading weapons like this for nearly half a century. Even the RCM uses ordinary injected conical bullets. This is strange. Very strange. I like this, officer. Strange means unique. Unique means incriminating. We need to find a gun that shot it. Something tells you that won't be any time soon. This'll have to be one of those epic tasks that's open for a while. So, hand-eye coordination is 3, and this is a 14, but we have a similar rifle on hand. We are aware of the name of the antique rifle we found, and Encyclopedia told us what kind of gun it came from. So we have an 83% chance of figuring this out. Let's punch it. A rifle. Revolutionary period. Your bullet looks to be an old 4.46 millimeter from the surplus left over from the turn of the century. Probably an antique. Or a retrofitted antique. And the make? The 4.46 caliber was widely used with the Belma Grave rifle, a Revacholian manufacturer. The BM dominated the battlefields of the Insulindian theater of the anti centennial revolution 50 years ago. Incidentally, you have just such a rifle with you the dusty old thing you found hidden in the basement below the commercial area. It's unusable, sadly. If it were, the bullet would probably fit the chamber. And is anyone still making them? No, but Zeliger, a major firearm manufacturer, ended up with a surplus after the war. So there are still a lot of these old military rifles floating around, usually broken. The quality was appalling. And who uses them these days? Antiques enthusiasts, guerrilla fighters in distant countries, a few lucky jamrock bangers, you're looking for the same thing you found in that hidden weapons cache, only in working order. Hmm. What are you thinking? Bullet? <laughs> I think I know where this came from. Okay. And? The shot probably came from a Bell McGrath rifle. An antique. That makes sense. There can't be many breech-loading rifles floating around in Martinez, or anywhere in Ravachol, really. Why not? Are you not open to the idea that the dead have risen and they're still fighting a war from 50 years ago? They might be, but they probably aren't using uh, modern arms manufacturers in what it seems like Rust Belt-esque uh, conditions. <laughs> but we'll see. Why not? Yeah, why not? Sure, there's some arms trafficking. But the laws prohibiting the use of breech loaders we inherited from the monarchy have been effective, from what I've seen. Some new RCM recruits get impatient with their muzzle loaders once they've trained with military grade weapons, but they realize it's worth it in the end. Prohibiting peacetime law enforcement to front loaded rifles is a policy enforced by the Moralist International in all the nations of the Real Belt. Wow. Forget it. Forget about the badge. When do we get the freaking guns? Wow, gun control, huh? Sounds that, lame. Gun control is horrible. How can I be rock hard all day without unregulated guns? That's right. I need the confidence to ask my boss for that promotion. <laughs> ask my wife to marry me. That's right. And if they say no, well. Well, then I just rub the gun on my face. I don't even directly threaten them with it. It's, it's just more, they're uncomfortable. That would be that would be much more threatening in some ways. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you have like a little like hunting knife like taped to the end of it like a bayonet. <laughs> just carving, <laughs> carving holes into your own forehead. <laughs> just right damaged. <laughs> Wait, sorry. Yeah. Worth it, what, getting shot? Or I think we should have more good power. No, makes you consider every shot, I think. But I right. don't like, uh, yeah. Our cop comes out in favor of gun control. All right. I like enough. gun control, yeah. Imagine if everyone, cops, citizens, had access to firearms that could shoot multiple rounds without pausing to reload. 
after the first shot, the second, third, and so on come much easier. But back to the investigation. Hmm. That's probably not a commentary on anything. Yeah, I'm glad this uh, antique rifle didn't have a bump stock. Mm -hmm. It's good that video games are not political, right? Absolutely. Metal Gear Solid was not political in any way. It was about sneaking and uh, fighting your brother. That's right. That's right. And also yeah. about uh, animals. I love animals. What's your favorite animal? Mine's an ocelot. Mine is a mantis. Nice. Seems like we're looking for an antiques enthusiast. Doesn't seem that likely. But we'll check out all possible leads. Next step, finding the gun itself. All right. Yeah. I guess the bullet has nothing more to say. Thank you, bullet, for your service, for your work. All right, we'll pop that up top here. Uh, anything read, else you want to interact with? Let's read the fridge note. Sure. The note oh, that, that is just... written with a blue pencil on a piece of lined office paper. The kitchen magnets have left spots. Oh, we did read on this note. Surface. Oh, okay. Who wrote this... it? It's uh, this is the one I think that was talking about the filament memory that we went and found, and That's you know, that they hid it so that Kuno wouldn't get to it. <laughs> yeah, right, let's find out who wrote it. Yeah, Kuno wrote it. Looks like someone from that radio game company upstairs. I'm a little surprised they just left their property lying here. <laughs> Maybe they had to leave in a hurry. They were just really getting sacked. That's a plausible hypothesis. Remind me again, what's a... F Sorry, go on. I was going to say, do you want to yeah. know what a filament memory even is? I would like to know what this is. I am low tech. Look at me. It belongs inside a radio computer, storing its memory. It's like a tape. You listen to disco tapes, right? It's like one of your disco tapes, only for a computer. Hmm, interesting. It's like a, it's like a vinyl record, but for your computer. Yeah, imagine laser discs, but smaller and a cube. It's like I love a that the production schedule you found. Only this one's an off-site copy. I see. Uh, I like that the the time period that this is like loosely based off of, or at least like is is referencing very slightly, has tape decks, and tape decks are from the same era in which computers would use tape like this, but they have decided to make a fantastical translucent cube for their computers instead of just using tape. Yep. It's wild. I love it. Uh, and said, so, yeah, only this one's an offsite copy. So where did they say this one made? Someone has scribbled. S. I can't believe the offsite copy is still here. The illiterate. You find the filament memory with the offsite copy in the frozen ah, ice cream. Ah, in the frozen maker. ice cream maker. Please take it home. Uh. ASAP. It's important. So that was that big one in the basement that was that was that we needed the big pry bar to open. So. Uh, although we could have uh, opened if we un unplugged one of the cables, right? We could have dethought it uh, and uh, given it a go. You know, that's a, you know, I feel like we should have done that. I feel like an idiot for not uh, thinking of doing that. I mean, we can go look at it now if you want. Let's go do that. Yeah, right, it's probably so. not going to dethaw like right away, but well, I'll cut so. straight down to the basement and we'll we'll give it a go. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, this was the freezer I think that he was talking about. Yeah, we need this that orange machine inside. is buzzing like an. You slip your no. If you want to try again, then you need to have the pry bar in your hand, detective. Although so yeah, we can try to unplug it here. I think two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice bear fridge, and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. So you want to try to unplug it? Before we do, yep. I'm hoping that this is strong enough, or at least is not like messed up enough that we're going to have to make a check, and then we end up breaking both. That's my fear. Well, we can... I mean, if you don't want to unplug it, we don't have to unplug it. No, I mean, I'm just... Wait until I'm we just, get rid of the body. No, let's unplug it. I was just uh, articulating a thought. Yeah, no, I mean, it's fair enough. Yeah. You can, but... Something close to you dies with a soft electric purr. Why did you do that? What? None of these are none of these are why I did it. <laughs> because it's black, the color of the immeasurable cosmos. Also it says ice cream box, Kim. The lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. 
The electric Wait. distribution board now has one cable missing. Alright, so if we... What's rat? This orange machine, you slip no. If you want to try again, then you need to have the pry bar in your hand, detective. Is it safe it's thought or not? Oh yeah, let me check. I, I, sorry, we need to have the pry bar in our hand to mm. even try. Uh, so let me just grab it and see. This orange machine is dead still. Yeah, so it because we've unplugged the machine, it's getting plus two, but and the pry bar is still not strong freezer. enough. The ice uh, around slowly so. melting. Oh, no, all the Hagen Dawson and stuff is gonna melt. No drumsticks for us, Kim. We can plug it back in if you want, if you're worried about it. I'm I'm not. I think uh oh, like we're just getting a note that's in there, right? Uh that will a filament memory. I, I don't know if those I, things need to be refrigerated. <laughs> I hope not. I mean it's been in our sweaty pocket all day, but uh, Yeah, exactly. I don't, so probably I don't think not, we eh? need to, Yeah, we don't need to do that. Alright, where to? We have 10 minutes until we can go talk to Martin Martinez. So I'm trying to think what we can do in 10 minutes. I think we should probably just read something. Sure. Let's read romantically at the bottom of this set of stairs with Kim do, and the Do desk. you want to talk to Plaisance, actually? That's something we could probably do in 10 minutes. Actually, that's a really good idea. I forgot about that. All right, let's do that. I'll uh, cut to the bookstore. All right. All right, here's Plaisance. Plaisance. We what found her... And also, do buy the books. There may be teachings in them. Okay, please. Why would you say that? <laughs> what is wrong with you? Just buy the books, okay? Oh, we have to talk to... No, I don't want to tell her about Niha. That sounds... I don't want to get her in trouble. Okay, then we don't have to. I don't, uh, I, I'm afraid of her just being like, oh, she's a freeloader. She's ruining the free market of blah, blah, blah. All right, then that's fine. Uh, that's fine. Do you want to buy any books while we're here? I do not think so. I thought right. we could lie to Plaisance. I was ex actually excited to like give her hopes up. Well, she will just continue to believe there's a ghost, I guess. So yeah, she, you, there's a ghost in here, Plaisance. Also, we are ghosts now. We're ghosting you in your face. All right, do you want to read something then? Uh, yeah, let's time? read something. Let's read something right in front of Plaisance just to upset her because we brought a book in from outside. Okay, do you want to... Which one of these is interesting to you? Uh, let's... Wait, we read the communist book already, right? We read part of it. Let's keep reading it. All right. Just to upset the her. The face of King Freecell smiles at you. For some reason, the smile now strikes you as more forced than it did before. What's the Kunst, Kult, and Kultur? It takes a moment, but gradually it dawns on you that Kunst und Kultur must mean arts and culture. Why they decided to title this one section in Valda is beyond you. As you leaf through this section, you come across several reviews of recent radio plays, as well as a brief artist spotlight featuring a local artist identified only as C.S. The main feature, though, is a long essay titled Tip Top Tourne, A Critical Mazovian Perspective. Any of that Still sound on. interesting to you? Uh, I'm curious what this Tip Top Tourne is, because anything with the alliteration like that has piqued my interest. The actual article is surprisingly light on details. But after skimming a page or two, you gather that it has something to do with motor carriage racing. If you don't follow it, you only ever hear about the ludicrous sponsorships and obscene death toll. So Holy it's about crow. car racing. What, do you want to read more about car racing? I really would. I love this NASCAR section in the communist uh, uh, book. <laughs> Let's find out. Let's do it. You think you're settling in for a relaxing recap of the most recent season, maybe sprinkled with some nice anecdotes about a few of the more colorful drivers. Instead, you find yourself skimming a 10,000 word feature about all the politically problematic aspects of Tip Top Tourney. Uh oh, what's wrong with it? Why? What's, what could possibly be political about a sport? Where to even start? For one, there's the crass commercialism of its sponsorships, and then there's the practically criminal emphasis on deadly motor crashes. So, 
all of it, basically. <laughs> what? What does it mean by uh, emphasis? Like, is it a good emphasis or a bad <laughs> emphasis? I mean, everyone everyone knows the only reason to go to a NASCAR race is to see a crash. Yeah, like, you're not, you're not, act, don't, you can't fool me, guys. You don't actually like seeing the car drive around in an oval, okay? At least, at both. least in like Formula One, they like turn left and right, you know? I thought it was just in a straight line, honestly. <laughs> you're thinking of drag racing. <laughs> I'm thinking of drag racing in more ways than one. But, anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> I definitely don't have a strong opinion about motor vehicle racing. Don't, don't add me. I, I have a strong opinion. Are you ready? I think most people that watch NASCAR have never seen Days of Thunder. Whoa. It's like Top Gun for NASCAR. I bet they've never seen it. And how it's like they dipped the film in coffee with just how brown every single scene is in that movie. It's like you're watching it through a pair of Ray-Bans. And anyway. Any, we have we had our own little mini kunst and culture corner here about yeah. days of thunder um you guys want right. to know more about days of thunder uh, do not at me either uh what's so bad about sponsorships under capitalism the article says every pursuit has its price every pleasure even one as elemental as the joy of racing others around a track is reduced to an advertising opportunity. Thus, the so-called tournay becomes a competition between increasingly meaningless brand signifiers. Your discount laundry detergent racing against a pack of Astra cigarettes, or even a fritter. But you do get to see crashes. And that precisely is what's problematic about it. Were it not for the promise of random, spectacular violence, audiences would quickly lose interest at the end of the day it's the destruction of these 750,000 real races that you're really watching for well what do you think tyler i think racing should be a collaborative effort like eve online and not competitive like csgo <laughs> that's my hot take Incredibly uh no, i'm pretty hard. sure i'm pretty sure i like it for the racing sure you think that, but subconsciously, it's the visions of brand names being engulfed in flames that you crave. It does sound pretty good. I do like it. I'm glad that's it's a place the stilted language success. and overconfident tone. That's the real giveaway here. You're almost certainly reading a recycled university essay, one that could probably use some edits. Do you want to make some edits? <laughs> I would love to, but uh, I think it's time for us to head to the frit, get some magnesium. I cannot do that until we finish this conversation tree. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, let's take out the pen. Let's make a few quick changes, and then we can mail them later. Armed with the lieutenant's trusty blue pen, you spend entirely too much time Holy crap, it took, every meaning it took 20 minutes <laughs> unsubstantiated claim you come across by the time you're finished the original article is nearly illegible you know most people would just write a letter to the editor or even better just leave it be uh oh can you even believe how badly written some of these articles are I can imagine. Something tells me there's not exactly a glut of young communists teaching to write about Tip Top for La Fumée. If I had to wager, I'd say they've never even seen the inside of a motor, much less a motor race. I take whatever they write with a large grain of salt. You flip back to the front of the magazine. The table of contents unfolds before you. I mean, Kim is a car boy, so it's not that surprising. Yeah. All right, we'll put it away. We can look at local concerns later. I hope Play Sans is crying right now as she sees us read this communist book. Hey, man. She doesn't care. <laughs> well, she, well, she should. Cause we, oh, her, her kid's gone. Your, she had to go to bed. It's 9 o'clock. That's fair enough. Your rebellion will be monetized and sold back to you. Uh, what's more dangerous than staying up past 10 on a school night? All right, uh, let's go to the frit. Yeah. All right, Tom, let's buy some magnesium. A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal sprays, and blister packs. They all bear the Saint-Baptiste um, Pharmaceutics logo. Drumming. 
Okay, here. I hope Saint Batiste makes you feel better or something. Saint Batiste makes me feel old. The tear machine stands in the corner. I don't have any tear. All right. Oh. Okay. Continue. All right. Uh, let's get out of here. I'm get, I'm ready to mag it up. I'm mag it sideways. Yeah. You mag it sideways or mag it up? Mag it up, mag it down, mag it sideways, whatever you want, man. Mag it up, mag it in, like just begin. I came to win, I don't mean that's a sin. Alright. Damn, people get so mad playing Settlers at Catan. That's a bit of a divergence. I, oh, it really is. I had to do it the other day, and uh, man, people just get mad. They do. Alright, let's head upstairs. Yeah. Oh, we have a thought. Night is falling in the city. Well, 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 look who it is. Traffic in the city. Motor cars looking pretty. Just the man we came to see. John Dummerie, you found me. Told us to come here. His slender figure is backlit by city lights. It's distant streets and motorways flashing like diamonds. Got the hint. Found the key right under the stone. That's how we got into yeah. the apartment, like, yesterday? Or, like, this morning? <laughs> which, which apartment again? To this apartment building. Uh, he told oh, us where to right. find the key. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. That took a minute. So tell me, are you here to make things right again? That's what I'm aiming for. I want this, uh, I want things to be good again. Beautiful. I have some good news for you. My Sunday friend is visiting me tonight. I told him about you and he'd like to say hello. Step in. He's already waiting. I'm digging the view here. Mm-hmm. That's why I chose this place. Martinez is special, isn't it? Wait. Suddenly you are digging thing? <laughs> I've always dug things, Kim. Come on. Kim, it's natural to dig things. I'm digging I'm digging the vibe. Uh, yeah, but why would I want to meet your friend? Trust me, you do. Don't tell me it's uh Everard Clark is in there. <laughs> it's Sunday friend. Oh, guess we'll find out. Do we... Welcome, Mr. Dubois. First we want to talk to you, apparently. I have so many questions. Like, number one, where'd you get that RGB light for the outside of your apartment? That's pretty cool. That's nice, Holy but gamers have I don't that. have anything to tell you. It's my friend you're looking for, not me. He takes another drag of his unfiltered cigarette and looks around. It's getting dark, and the neighboring windows have lit up one by one. Downstairs, a cat crosses the yard, disappearing into the bush. Besides, I've got to run. He's going to leave you alone again. That's sad. Aww. Something tells you you're never going to talk to an individual this cool or mysterious ever again. <laughs> oh, number three is just so sad. I don't care. Aww. I don't care about people leaving me all the time. Babaka. <laughs> Where are you running to? Where are you running from? Hmm. Well, I'm pretty sure he's running from here, but... Yeah, he's like, my friend is a bomb. It's gonna explode. <laughs> and she go my in as a tripwire. My Sunday friend is the anarchist cookbook. <laughs> oh, that's a new thing, apparently. So people are just sharing how to make pipe bombs on TikTok. Sick. Yeah, because It's Zoomers always important read. to know how to do industrial uh, sabotage, just in case. This is literally a consequence of the Industrial Revolution. What do you so think? I'd like to know where he's running to. To the city. It's a beautiful night. Dude. Only if you promise that we'll talk again. It's important. Something flutters in the corner of the lieutenant's mouth as you're saying those words. We'll talk. Just not tonight. Take care, all right? <gasps> all right. We have gotten a bunch of new tasks, and we leveled up. Oh, I like all those green lines. Very cool. And he's gone again. 
Looks like it's becoming a theme for him. Why is he's always leaving? Why is he always leaving him? Who knows, detective? It's a mystery. There's something different about him. Like, I think he's hot. Different, of course. Such, he's such a good listener. You like talking to him. Oh, he thinks. Oh, it this is cute. Feel special. It made yeah. you feel special. He's Read into a him. It together. It's all he can do to keep from bursting out in laughter. Shut up, Come Kim. Come on, detective. Let's go. We've got a potential witness to interview. His Sunday friend, remember? Well. He made us feel special. <sighs> that's all there is to say. Chris, you make me feel special. Well, that's nice. And I hope that today we have made our audience feel special with uh, this episode of Disco Elysium, because before we go and talk to the Sunday friend, uh, our episode will draw to a close. So, if you have been, thanks for watching. Thank you, our special audience, for being with us. Always remember, the future's brighter, because you're in it. All right. Bye. <laughs>